Good morning. America may never be the same, and this is why. A beautiful Tuesday morning turned tragic when American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. And that was just the beginning. This morning, just over 24 hours later, the heart of commerce and the signature of the New York skyline is no more. The nerve center of the U.S. military deliberately and viciously attacked, leaving a nation and the rest of the world stunned today, Wednesday, September the 12th, 2001. From NBC News, this is Today with Katie Couric and Matt Lauer. And welcome to today on this Wednesday morning, a morning people are waking up in disbelief with unbelievably heavy hearts, especially those who have lost loved ones or who are uncertain where their loved ones are. I'm Katie Couric. And I'm Matt Lauer. Tuesday morning did start off beautifully. It was a gorgeous day until 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time when that happened. Horrible pictures. This was a scene 25 hours ago. Airplanes intentionally plunging into the World Trade Center. We still don't know how high the human toll will climb. But the early numbers, Matt, are staggering. 266 people on the four hijacked planes are dead. Two hit the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, one hit the Pentagon, and one crashed 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. At the Pentagon, up to 800 people are now feared dead. In New York City, Mayor Rudy Giuliani says the toll could be more than any of us can bear. The New York Fire Commissioner said that he is missing 300 firefighters and EMS personnel. 33 New York police officers are missing. Estimates are that there were up to 50,000 people working in the World Trade Center on Tuesday morning when the attacks took place. And the stories of some of those people escaping the building are harrowing. A glimmer, and I mean a glimmer of hope, word is that some victims have survived in Lower Manhattan. Cell phone calls coming from the rubble and people still alive pulled out from inside that wreckage. At this point, there are two makeshift morgues being set up in Lower Manhattan, and there are also some heartbreaking reports of passengers on those four doomed planes calling loved ones to report that they'd been hijacked and in some cases to say, I love you and goodbye. And Matt, we're beginning to get a picture of the terror on those planes before they crashed. Flight attendants being stabbed, passengers herded to the back of the planes, and now new developments overnight in Boston where two of the flights originated. Five suspects have been identified and a car seized from the Logan Airport parking lot. But there still is much we do not know and may not know for a very long time. The president spoke to the nation last night. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. That was President Bush speaking to the nation from the Oval Office last night. We are going to cover this story all morning long. Let's begin with NBC's David Bloom, who's close to the rescue efforts this morning. David? Matt, there are conflicting accounts this morning as to how many people may have been pulled alive from the rubble. We know that three people for sure are safe. Two New York City police officers, also a New York City fire department official pulled from the rubble early this morning. Essentially, Matt, more than 25 hours after the first explosions, you can still see the smoke billowing behind me, and there are three basic problems that the rescuers say they're confronting. Number one, you can still see them throwing a large amount of water on these buildings because there are still fires burning this morning. Second issue, far more significant, the rescuers tell us, is the unstable nature of the surrounding buildings. There are desperately worried about more buildings collapsing, so they're proceeding very gingerly. The third issue is just the remaining debris, so much so that it's making it impossible to conduct a thorough search and rescue effort. They're merely going into caverns where they're hoping that they might still find people alive, but it is a cruelly slow process. Overnight in New York City, a faint glimmer of hope. At least two victims pulled alive from the rubble. 